Hey guys, I am going to review the King Tiger uh, Hentral Turret with Zimmerit Dragon K6303 from 2007. So, history of this kit is uh, not quite as impressive, I guess you could say, as the uh, Tiger 1s. So the majority of stuff in here dates all the way back to 2004 or earlier to 1995 with those, um, the Yag Tiger Henschel kits. A lot of the suspension and this stuff is all really old. Um, so the rundown of, of, of the KTs anyway was in 04, there was 6189 which was a Porsche, and then right after that 6208 the Henschel. Those were like the first two proper KTs from Dragon. And then in 05, they started this Battle of the Bulge thing with 6254. Then in 06, right after that, 6232 was the new pattern track late Bulge one. Um, then there was a premium Porsche 6312, uh, a few white boxes. And then in 07, we started with 6302, uh, the Porsche Zim, and 6303, this one, the Henschel Zim. And then there's been a few other, again, white boxes, which I don't mention due to their rarity or price. Um, just I talk about these base kits and then uh, in 2011 there was 6209 which is a transport Henschel all of them are nearly the same near makes no difference the exact same kits uh, When it comes down to the majority of the sprues now since then um, Zvezda has started reboxing either the same molds or very uh, Based on this kit as well. So there's this kit is everywhere and it's not really that good which is strange because it's it's okay. I mean, this is probably my favorite of, of the KTs, um, but they're not they're not what Tiger One kits are. Uh, so looking at this stuff, uh, we have just some. Here's what the Zimmerit looks like. That's actually upside down for me. <clears throat> here's what the Zimmerit looks like, and it actually is pretty random. Uh, the loader's hatch has a bracket. We always love that. Uh, we do have PE for this. Slide molded cupola. Uh, we can see that it has magic tracks, which is fantastic in this particular version. Um, metal gun barrel, uh, metal tow cables, PE clamps, metal tow shackles, um, and then there's some PE for this part up here, the uh, the escape hatch or low, whatever they use it for. Um, I think there is versions of this out now as well without this stuff in it, but this essentially, if you look at it, um, has the same stuff in it that the premium kits do. And I actually, a lot of the KTs have premium-like qualities. I actually have one here, which I will refer to a few times, but here is this uh, Battle of the Bulge one, and you can see there that it has all of the like metal barrel and metal stuff, and this one came with a bunch of figures too, and magic tracks. It's actually pretty loaded. Um, but these kits are nearly identical, apart from very few parts, which I'll mention a couple times. And that goes for all the KTs as well. So, instructions. Um, some blue, not a ton, which I always kind of look at. Um, what I will bring up right now is here again is this other King Tiger, which is the Battle of the Bulge one, which was from 06. So these are only about a year apart. So if you look at the sprue maps, like for instance, that's the same. That's the same. Like basically a lot of it is the same. The Zimmerit parts, obviously, which on this sprue would be... I'm looking on the map here these guys. Um, so that's most Zim parts apart from the hull uh, won't be in here. So back in this one they're still going to be on sprues whereas in this one those sprues may be in here. So for instance in here it's D sprue has the hull on it and here D sprue is the exact same sprue with just the hull part taken off. See? So they're incredibly similar. So as they are similar you could tell that the other color instructions were color, and these are just um, grayscale versions of those instructions. So we have very simplified uh, idler, although it's three piece and a KT. Um, just swing arms, no torsion bars. Final drives, pretty simple. Sprockets and wheels, pretty simple, normally two halves. All this um, suspension, as far as I know, dates back to the 1995 Yog Tiger kit.
which was probably a Gunza thing, or I think may have been one of the first um, 3945 series Dragon Kits. So you can see how simple things are in here. And then again, just to, uh, to clarify, like there's the two next to each other. This is the Battle of the Bulge one, this is the, uh, the Zen one. So exhausts are just two pieces, and then here's where things start to diverge off. So if you look here, here, it's because my son, by the way, built this, so I was kind of watching him do this. So here's, um, you get some PE assemblies here that aren't called out for in here, or like this jack is replaced with this jack. Now these kits were only a year apart, but this one kind of got given the premium treatment where it got specialized little sprues for parts and stuff, so. Anyway, so we got some PE going here, which is just a clasp for, I can't even tell what it's for. It's pointing over here, but I don't see where it's aiming me. Anyway. Um, so then the jack goes on. So far pretty simple, and you can see these drawings are actually quite easy to follow. So here's another way that it diverges from earlier KT kits. All of these do, actually. You have the full um, MG from, like, Tiger One kits that goes in here instead of just on the other kit. It's just the barrel. Uh, Front fenders go on, they're telling you to do magic tracks now, I guess. Um, and I have my own issues with these magic tracks, by the way. They don't go together terribly well. Um, at least they didn't for me, by the way. That's just a me thing, maybe. And then here's a bunch more PE clamp stuff that won't be in the older KT kits. Um, but I'm sure this is all the same in the Porsche Zimmeret one. But all the, the normal stuff, that if you look here, is uh, quite simplified, like... The non-PE clamp version of that shovel just has a little nub because it's old. It's actually quite, quite an old um, molding. So this basically feels like a premium kit, this thing. So you've got the option for actual metal tow cables or I think they have molded on ones. I don't even know if they have molded on ones in there. A lot of KTs and Yog Tigers, I see people don't even do the cables because they're pretty fiddly because they hang on the sides. Um, more PE clamps. More cables, lots of PE um, cable holding stuff, and pretty scary to be honest with you. This kit, for the most part, looks super simple, and then when you look at the premium stuff, or that type of stuff, it looks pretty, you know, it's like an old school, um, old kit with like a Voyager upgrade set. It's kind of what it looks like to me. Um, the grills are in etch instead of mesh like Tamiya, and then you get them on there. The turret. Not terribly complicated. Some real simplified interior breech stuff. Um, I think this cupola actually stems from the Tiger One kits as well. It looks pretty much the same. Not a whole lot of interior stuff though. Uh, a real fiddly bit down here for this. Apparently this hatch is more complicated than I understand, so I'm gonna have to build it to really understand it. There's like a little like secondary door thing in there. At least that's as far as I can tell. You got some chain for the pistol port, which is pretty cool. And then in this one, you have two options for barrel. You've got two halves, or you've got a metal one. Uh, and then you... And then you have um, three-piece uh, slide mold to break. Hanging tracks on the outside of the turret, and that's about it. Um, marking options. France 44. Nothing, nothing fancy. Tritonal, standard issue King Tiger stuff. There's some more. Um, Germany in 45, France 44, Hungary 45, that's, uh, that's where Kurt Nispel was, I think. Anyway, so lots of marking options, so the decals are pretty substantial. Not so much as they were in the older kits, though. I'll tell you that in the uh, Battle of the Bulge kits, the, the decal the number jungle is a little more substantial. So I bought this in, I think, summer 2014, so... Um, it was a, um, another boxing of an older kit, right? So, because uh, I don't normally buy things from places like Scale Hobbyist, but I did. So I got all the stuff that used to be on the Dragon card in a little bag. So, let me pull this stuff out. Um, so the marking options are pretty substantial. 
lots of different colors because I mean a lot there's a lot of debate as to what color these markings were sometimes you'll see that they give you the same uh, numbers in like blue or white because nobody knows what color they were but at least you've got a few options here the uh that battle of the bulge one has like just absolute just number sheets so you can pick like whatever numbering you want uh, but these are pretty good and here we have some stuff We've got metal tow cables, more metal tow cables, and towing shackles. So this one is for the track changing cable, so it feels more like a useless kind of thin guitar string. These are the more heavy ones that I can already tell that's going to be a pain, and I'd like to replace with copper. Probably won't. That's for the ammo rounds, PE on the back of that. All this, by the way, was in the earlier kits. And then in here we have our metal barrel, three brass rounds, and some chain. So, pretty impressive, especially since this kit can go pretty cheaply. Um, the PE sheet is rather substantial. So there's the parts for that door on the, uh, like the escape hatch, your grills, so your under grills and over grills, PE clamps, shovel cover by the look of it, frankly enough PE for most people. And we've also got um, two different late cast cupolas, well, at least in a Tiger, they're late, but um, basically one has a rain guard and one doesn't. It's your standard late cupola. Magic tracks are in two separate bags. We have the main piece and the connector piece, so that's the primary one. And then it just has this little guy that connects them together. Which, if you're familiar with any Yog Tiger or KT stuff, you've seen these many times. Oops. Like that. Um, I had issue with them because they tend not to go together as smoothly. Like, even right now, I'm having trouble pushing them together. So what I would do is sort of oversaturate this area here with glue and then just have to force these down. Um, and the result, in my experience, is they don't quite sit as friendly as your standard Magic Tracks do. So here's the first sprue. Um, you can see where the, the old part of the turret used to be. Um, for anybody paying attention, there's what it looks like when it's built up. It's actually pretty nice. This is the older turret without the Zimmerant from the Battle of the Bulge kit. Details are okay. A little bit not quite as uh, fancy as maybe the newer stuff is. Not quite as clean. So here's the older cupolas versus the slide molded ones they give us now. Not a terrible difference. This one you have to have these two separate pieces for. Armored cover for the ventilator. There's the old two-piece barrel, parts of the mantlet, but most of this stuff is pretty good. Stuff that doesn't really need anything more than what's here, for sure. So it's not a terribly exciting sprue. Bottom of the turret, some stuff that we don't use, but um, it looks pretty good. That's probably why they keep using it. Then we've got this thing which is our Zimmerit parts. So this one I'll get real close into. So there's the rear plate. I love the randomness of this Zim and the depth. I think the depth is great. This is from about the same time that um, 6383 came out. So for me, this is basically perfect. I like it very much. Um, there's their mantlet with Zim. Again, very, very aggressive. This is a lower glacis, I think. And you got some more parts. Now also, they had a mantlet for a Henschel and a Porsche in here, so you get that in both. So I think they use the same Zimmerit parts for both kits. There's your ball MG. And then just more like tiny little Zimmerit cover parts. I think these are for the um, hinges in the rear hatch. But overall, these parts look pretty amazing, which is one of the reasons why I prefer this kit, is that it's very good molded on them. Moving on, we've got some things that I think, yeah, these are a little bit older. Again, if you may have heard me talk about before, and maybe I'm being weird for pointing it out, but even by the font and the way that this looks, you can tell how old sprues are. But 
the parts. So here we have your older school dragon tool clamps that are just sort of nubs uh, I don't really like using. So let's see if these guys... See, these are the older style of cable changing things where they have the, the notch through the back so you can just glue it in that way instead of just jamming it in. Um, barrel cleaning rods, pretty decent styrene track, track change cable, excuse me. Front fenders, and not a whole lot else. Um, we won't use everything on this sprue for sure. Um, but what, what we do use works fine. Now this, I've had people um, talk about uh, when they looked at reviews, or I've watched other people's reviews, and they didn't understand what they were looking at. They're like, what crap is this? This is a Yog Tiger sprue. That's why you see this. This is the back of a Yog Tiger. This is where the hinges go for the doors, and that's where the antenna mount goes. So that's where the sprue comes from. You'll see that a lot of it's cut off up here, but that's that's its origin. So uh, They have the same engine decks and stuff, so... More tools with sort of older style clamps. Not too impressive. Some uh, patches. Uh, maybe we'll use these rear mud flaps. I'm not sure if they do or not. More armored exhaust shrouds. And a jack block. Which, let me get on this jack block. I'm going to guess by how old the Yog Tiger kits are. That's not a terribly good jack block. Eh. Not, not terribly textury. The top is fine, but the sides are blank, so. But so we basically just use some things from this, but that's its origin, is it's a Yacht Tiger screw. So we have two of these. This is our drive sprockets, idlers, final drives, and some more smaller parts. These are terrible. Now I don't say that to be snobby. But in, these are the spare track hangers, and they use them on the Yog Tiger as well. And if you look at them carefully, let me see if I can pick it up on here. One side, eh, I'm losing it there. Back up a little bit. One side is always fairly well molded, while the other side flattens out. Uh, it's kind of annoying. So this side looks pretty crisp, and then if I flip them over, it's completely detailless. It's just a flat. Blech. So I've used these, but they require a lot of sanding, especially on a on a Yog Tiger. They have a number of them, very, very obviously on the sides. So other small parts in here are just tie downs, grab handles. These are Yog Tiger um, hatch handles. So again, this is from the Yog Tiger kit from the '90s. The detail on the sprockets and stuff, though. I'll try to get in there without freaking out the camera. It's okay. It's nothing spectacular for sure. But it, it still holds up. This sprue is a tool for the KT. It has the breech for the KWK43 um, and another cupola that we're not going to use. Um, some interior hatch for the loader, loader's hatch thing, and what are these guys? I'm not sure what these things are. Oh, these are more. Interesting. Check this. So these are the same side mounts that I was just complaining about in that Yog Tiger kit, but these are molded like this. See how they're hanging there? That looks like they'd be better. I've never seen these before. Well, they're much better. Okay, so don't use the other ones, use those. These fenders are basically in a single piece here, which I find interesting, because in the old Yog Tiger kits, they were broken into three. Um, and also very interesting is in that old Yog Tiger kit, if you look, the sprue actually says Revel up here, which I, I don't know where it comes from. Obviously a, a Revel kit of some kind. So there's the breech stuff, it looks okay. And then some more tiny little fiddly guys. Yeah, that's uh, another part of the spare track hanging section, so not a lot on this thing, but it seems seems good. So these we have three of. Um, we've got six swing arms, 
these are like the wheel extensions and then a couple different types of the wheels because they they lock in a certain way um, like that so detail wise they're all right. I'll tell you that, I mean, they've never updated these. So they look okay. Every Yog Tiger and um, KT uses essentially the same ones. Uh, they don't even have the name of the kit. They're just called normal type. So, uh, but they look all right. I have a little issue with the whole suspension system in, in these older kits because it doesn't, when I've built them, and I've built two of them, it tends not to sit terribly uh, flat. Now, that could have just been my mistake, but that's a pretty old-school, simplistic sprue. Uh, but they get the job done. We've got a couple small sprues as well. We've got our tow cable eyelets, which is the same in like every Tiger and King Tiger kit ever. So, not much to report there. And then this one is for a track changing cable. So you can see the size difference. And you do have to do both in metal on this kit. Then this is just the multi-part jack, some uh, towing S's and the, the later type. And then one more sprue is our tools without clamps, which if you want to make this thing awesome, you got to either get spare parts from another kit with molded on clamps or do your PE clamps for this one. Uh, these look awesome. They always do. By the way, um, for anybody paying attention, one of the faults of kits that aren't by companies like Dragon or Tamiya is this shovel. Look at uh, the Academy or Italeri shovels like this that go in the front of a Tiger one, and they always look like they got melted. So Dragon does a really good job in that shovel. We have this little sprue, which is our muzzle brake, our bow MG, basically. These are straight out of a Tiger one kit. Uh, I mean, obviously, only the later. Tiger ones use this, but this sprue particularly is in like every Tiger one kit I've ever made. And then this little guy, uh, close defense weapon, loader's hatch bracket, and then the top bits for the cupola. Um, this is all again the exact same stuff you'd find in a Tiger one kit, and very modern by the way. This this fidelity here is what I always talk about when I say modern. Clear parts for the cupola. That's actually a Tiger One vision slot and the, the late cupola. So this is literally out of a Tiger One. This is the Ellsbrew brew from Tiger One. Um, again, I don't always have much to say about clear parts. They are transparent, which seems to be a plus. They are also a bit more brittle and fiddly than your standard parts. And we also have this, which is the S sprue out of a Tiger One kit, which is the individual periscopes for the cupola. Um, it has that kind of early 2000s, late 90s dragon plastic feel. The bevels are a little sharper. It's a little bit bulkier, but it, it's still quite nice. The surface is a little smooth, but um, all these hatches are fine. So if you look in here... Yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, I don't I don't want to use the word adequate, but that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, when it's built up, again, so you get, you know, it's a decent look. But, so the upper hull, which is here. So here is our Zimmerit. Again, I really, really like the way it's done on here. Um, I find that to be just fantastic. Look, and if you look at Bovington's KT, like it looks exactly like this. Some of this is, is uh, molded on, which I'm surprised by, because in a lot of their later other types of kits, like Panthers and stuff, this stuff will be more separate, but again, these this tooling is essentially um, it's just a, a retool of this hull, and this hull is you know just smooth, and there's your Zimmer at one. So I think that explains why all they did when they updated it was put Zim on it, but um, it does bring it to a very modern standard. So it looks pretty sweet. So our turret, 
more of the same fantastic zim on there the welds in the roof look pretty good i don't think they've changed a whole lot since the non-zim version the, the main difference in these two is just that so there's that and they might be a little improved tell you the truth back out a little so it's nice it seems very not warped I don't think that's the word you use for something. Very not warped, but it looks really good to me. So my my opinion on this thing is that um, it's it's good, um, but I don't know that everyone realizes due to the age of the kit how. So when it came out in 07, that it's actually you know quite a bit older than that. It's just sort of snazzied up. So I think the name like premium uh, might make more sense to those of us who are very familiar with their stuff because. It's got a ton of goodies, and it's an older tooling uh, with updated parts, and that's basically what a premium kit is. They just marketed it um, as Zimmerit because that was on there. Um, that that's that whole dragon marketing thing. I think I picked this up brand new on Scale Hobbyist for like thirty-five. It is actually quite cheap and quite easy to find, and so is the Porsche variant. And I think they're actually pretty solid kits. Um, I just like to be overly clear, sometimes offensively, and I apologize for that for the, the age of the sprues, because that seems to matter to me for whatever reason. Um, one little thing I'll, I'll say before I'm done here is that I, I dragged out the dragon card for the Battle of the Bulge one, and I much more prefer this decal sheet, because this is just bonkers. You could do anything with this, but you could do anything with this for any unit of any, like, Tiger Ones. I could use these for any kind of thing I want, so, you know, 212, 205. The font's a little different, uh, but it's close. <laughs> and close is good enough, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, and then, uh, also, so here's my, uh, Henschel Yacht Tiger that I'm actually going to be in the process of painting really soon, and all I wanted to point out was that, so those are the Dragon Magic tracks, and it's the exact same lower hull and the exact same suspension. Oop, lost a hatch. If you look at the left side, the Magic track took pretty well, and it's, it's okay. The right side kind of, another hatch, the right side kind of is cocked like that, and that's due to the torsion bars just not, not really sitting right. Um, and I had a hell of a time. I put lots of weight on this thing. And again, this could be Adam error, uh, but these magic tracks gave me a really hard time, and so did this suspension. When I first built this thing, and it again is the exact same suspension as is in this box, um, I had weights, and I was trying to get the wheels right in the end. I just had to like reef on the torsion bars or the swing arms and just bend them. So I put all the wheels on and just would bend them into shape like really hard. And eventually I got a pretty decent result of how it sits, but not not what I would have expected from uh, the kit when I went into it. I didn't know how old it was when I started it, though. Uh, which is kind of why I've been talking about that the whole time with this, is that this thing is awesome, uh, but parts of it will require some love. <laughs>